Bactrian camels run wild in Mongolia and it needs strength and determination to break one in. make incredibly good pack animals, but they're a devil of a job to catch. What they have to do now is oh, put a peg in its nose and begin the process of domesticating it. That means getting up on top of a wild camel and riding it for a while. Of course, the first thing it wants to do is going to want to go back to that herd. In a year's time, this camel will be tamed, receptive and obedient to its master's commands. The Nardum is always a big draw for Mongols. It's a festival of three manly sports, wrestling, archery and horse racing. This event is based on the centuries-old tradition of Mongol men demonstrating their physical prowess and skill. Today, the Nardum is a convivial celebration. People travel great distances to watch the spectacle. The wrestlers take the competition very seriously. The champion of the day challenged me. I thought 26 years of judo would stand me in good stead as Gambolt, my jeep driver, prepared me to meet my match. Before rounds, custom dictates that the wrestlers perform a dance based on the movements of a mythical bird called Garuda. I was astonished to win. These men are hard. They didn't even clear the rocks away before the fight. <laughs> Nursing four fractured ribs, I left Chandaman and headed west to Dort, a district perched at 3,600 metres in the Altai Mountains and home to the Mongol Oriankai people. Dort is yak country. Here the herders use yaks as they can survive harsh conditions at high altitude and manage steep inclines. The animals are used for transport and to provide milk, meat, fuel and hides. Mongolians have always had a strong tradition of hunting. Marmots, which are a type of rodent, are highly prized for their meat and fur. The hunter performs a masked dance, using a yak's tail to lure the marmots, which are highly inquisitive by nature. Today, the rifle has superseded the bow. Oh. 
The Altai Orienghai are renowned for their archery abilities, and today I'm very fortunate to have been invited to an archery competition. But of course, it starts with the formalities of the snuff bottle. The ritual of firing an arrow from the gear stems from the days of war when the gods were asked to assist the arrow in striking the enemy. The Mongolian bow is composite. It's made from horn and sinew bound together with fish glue. The clans in Genghis Khan's day were renowned for their deadly accuracy. Today, Mongols retain the bow in commemoration of this great hero. Mongolia is a rugged country. It takes a tough, proud and resilient people to live here. And it's all these qualities that have enabled Mongolians to survive centuries of cultural oppression. Today they enjoy a freedom that they haven't experienced since the days of Genghis Khan. A freedom to explore their customs and traditions and to explore again their cultural identity. <laughs> <laughs> 